Hello world, and welcome to Web Dev Frontiers. My name is Tomas, and I'm here to share my experience with you in WebTag. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you five additional HTML features that I hope you're not really aware of, but you should be putting them to good use. Let's jump straight in. The first element that I would like to show you is the figure and the fig caption element. Essentially, the figure element allows us to display a self-contained entity of some sort within a web page, and optionally, we can also add a caption to describe what that particular content is by using the fig caption element. Now, in my code editor, I have an example of the figure element, and in this case, I opted in to use an image element as its child, depicting a pizza. And notice I've also added the fig caption element. And in this case, because I have an image there, the caption describes, or rather should describe, what we are seeing on the image itself. And then on the right hand side of my screen, you actually see how the end result looks like. Now you see that the fig caption text appears in italics and it's slightly darker gray. The only reason why that works is because you can, of course, apply CSS to both the figure and the fig caption elements. And I just opted in to change the color of fig caption. But I really like this element or the combination of these two elements really, because it makes it very easy to display images with a caption text, for example, which is also very good for SEO purposes. The next element that I would like to mention is the mark element. And with the mark element, we can actually apply highlights within our HTML. Now, in this particular example, I have a hypothetical stock market tracker tool where I have XYZ Corporation and ABC Enterprises listed here, one having 100 stock and the other one has 200 stock. Now, you're probably thinking there's no mention of the mark element in here, and you're right because I'm adding that programmatically using JavaScript. Now, you can actually just use the mark element. So let me just show that to you real quick. So I can add mark and I can say hello, save this, refresh, and this is how it would look like. But a very good use case for using the mark element, amongst many others, is to highlight changes on a current page. Now, sometimes the mark element is also used to actually highlight search results, for example, within a document, but we're going to use it slightly differently. So let's just get rid of this. And let me enable my JavaScript and let me just show you what I'm doing here. So essentially, I'm going to randomly update the stock for one of these hypothetical companies. And the JavaScript is randomizing stuff, so that's not really important. But what's important is that if there is a change between the new value of the stock and the old value that we had, we're going to add the mark element. Also notice that you can actually style it and you can style it inline or you can style it using CSS. It doesn't really matter. I'm just going to also add the style of the text to be green if the new value is going to be larger than the old value and is going to be red if it's the other way around, where the new value is smaller than the old value, sort of indicating that the stock changed because it's going to be highlighted with yellow, but also indicating if the new value is actually better or worse. So let's just save this, come back to the HTML page and refresh. And the JavaScript executes, I think, every two seconds. So there we go. Now we get a notification almost automatically, seemingly, that the value has changed. And I'm just using the mark HTML element with some very simple CSS to highlight the changes on the page. Continuing with the list of potentially interesting HTML elements, the next one is the progress element. As the name suggests, it allows us to track the progress of something. And this can be anything from file upload progress to filling out and completing a form, or even things like adding a health bar for a game that you would play inside the browser and maybe tracking you know, the health or whatever other attributes for a certain character. And what you see here inside my code editor is the progress bar where I have a value attribute of 70 and the max attribute set to 100. And using these two values means that we are just at the 70th percentage of whatever progress we are tracking. And as you can see on the right hand side, that's how the browser would actually render the progress element. There's a blue bar indicating the progress and there's a light 
grey background for the progress itself. And the text 70% comes from this span element. Now, what I would like to show you next is how to style this particular progress element. But before we do that, I need to show you a little trick again from DevTools, because if you open up your elements panel, you will see that this is just seemingly a progress element. And that's true. But then where does the browser apply the blue color to it? you know, the progress element, how is that constructed by the browser? Now, believe it or not, we can actually look behind the scenes a little bit and figure that out. And once we figure that out, we will be able to apply our own custom styles to the progress element. So all you need to do is click on this cogwheel icon here, which will bring up the overall DevTools preferences panel. Then scroll down towards the second, third, or maybe around the half of this particular page and check this box that says show user agent shadow DOM. Now what the shadow DOM is, I may record a video about that in the future, but for now, just notice that a chevron appears next to the progress element. And if you expand it, now we have access to the so-called shadow root. The shadow root in this case will contain all the code, which is just three divs that would make up the style and the display play render for the progress element. And notice the pseudo attributes here, WebKit progress inner element, WebKit progress bar, WebKit progress value. We can target those from CSS in order to apply custom styling to the progress bar. So let's hop over to style.css here and notice that I've added some custom attributes to or custom CSS properties rather to the progress element. And then I'm targeting the pseudo selector WebKit progress bar progress value, most progress bar, and I also added some stuff for the span. And all I'm doing, I'm just applying standard CSS styles, background colors, border radiuses, linear gradients, etc., etc., to the pseudo selectors. So let's add the style to the HTML. And let's go ahead and refresh. And notice that now our progress level indicator has changed significantly. And you can open this up in a different browser and it would render exactly the same. This upcoming element, the object element, is a really interesting one because it allows us to pretty much embed another document on the page. And one of the really good use cases for this is to embed PDF documents inside the page itself. So the element is called object. And as you can see, I passed it a data attribute pointing to a PDF. Now I do have that PDF locally in my computer exactly in the same folder where this particular application is running from. I specified the type application PDF, and then I specified a width and a height for the PDF viewer on the page. Notice that I also added a paragraph, which is a fallback scenario because, you know, for whatever reason, the object element may not load, the PDF may not load correctly. You want to give a fallback to your users so that they can actually go ahead and download the PDF in question. And all I'm doing now is applying a couple of styles to it. And the result is this wonderful PDF viewer embedded inside the HTML page where I can go to any of the pages of the PDF document. I can zoom in, I can zoom out, essentially almost like a PDF viewer that you would have available on your computer, except this is now embedded inside your HTML. The other thing that I would like to note is you have additional context menus available here where you can, if the PDF supports, go into any of the chapters inside the PDF. And the object element works with other document types as well, but I'll let you figure those out on your own. But I think the PDF example is a very, very solid use case. I have left one of the most interesting elements as the last thing to mention. In fact, this is not really an HTML element, but rather an HTML attribute. So imagine a scenario where you have a website created in a different language other than English. And let's say that someone from an English speaking country where the locale of the browser is set to be English visits your website. Let's take a look at what happens. So we load the page and usually Chrome or any other browser would give you an option to translate the page. And in this case, it detects that the page's language is Spanish and it offers to translate that to me in English. Now let's see what happens if I click English and notice that the name of the company inside the paragraph did not change. However, inside the header, it did change. So we get a literal translation of the name of the company. 
And this is probably not something that you want. Now, of course, Google Translation's engine was intelligent enough to figure out that inside the context of a paragraph, the Luz Brillante LLC is actually the name of the company. So it did not translate it, but it couldn't make that assumption for the title. So I wonder, is there a way to tell the browsers not to translate a particular piece of text? And the good news, yes, there is. So all we need to do is add an attribute called the translate attribute, which takes a Boolean value, it's either yes or no. So we're going to say translate no to this. And just for good measure, we're also going to wrap this company name here inside span element and just specify translate no again. So let's hit save, come back to our page. So we're back to the original Spanish version of page. Chrome again offers to do the translation. So let's click on English. And if you look at now, the company name has no longer been translated for us. Now, the only thing that I would say, and I don't know why this is happening, but the space has now been removed. So all you need to do is just add an extra space here. I'm sorry, you need to edit it right here. And then the translation will contain the right space as well. But what matters is now things like company names or something that you do not wish to translate by the automatic translation engine, whichever browser's translation engine you use, you can just add the translate no attribute to any element and that piece of text will no longer be translated. All right, and that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you found these elements and that one single attribute to be interesting. And hopefully you will be able to put some of these into action inside your web applications. If you have any other HTML attribute or elements that you think is being underutilized, let me know in the comments below. I would also appreciate if you would like this video. And of course, if you would like to subscribe for more such content, please do so. Please take care and I'll see you in the next one.